Hi everyone, this is Cindy with Twisted True Crime. How are you all doing today? I'm doing this video about police interrogation techniques developed by the Naval Research Lab. And I'm proud to be a U.S. Navy veteran. So, behavioral indicators during a police interrogation. What just doesn't look right is an essential survival skill. Here's some cues. Rocking. We've all seen the images of Watts rocking, and it's a full body movement in which the individual is usually stationary, slowly sway back and forth, can be interpreted as an indicator of an impending violent act. Here are some examples. Chris Watts, of course. It's, uh, he's rocking back and forth and acting really guilty. There's something called duping delight. Duping delight is when a person feels true joy or happiness in their belief that they are fooling people. Here are some more examples. Here's Chris Watt. He is sometimes nervous and sometimes really anxious. There's Scott Peterson. He's smiling because he thinks he's going to be found innocent. Here's Eileen Warnos, who loved to be on camera. Here's Watts talking to Detective um, Hober, smiling away. Here's O.J. Simpson, when he thought that he was going to be found innocent, which he was. Here's some members of the Manson family, before they went to trial. And here's Charles Manson, playing up to the camera, thinking he's going to be found innocent. So, dissipatory actions. Hands touching face or hair. It involves a person repetitively running his hands through his hair, touching his face, facial hair, rubbing his eyes, rubbing his head. Here's Chris Watts. Here's Dennis Rader, the BTK killer. Here's the Night Stalker. He was a very scary individual. Here's Scott Peterson. He's listening to testimony and he's thinking. Um, scratching. It involves a person repeatedly itching or scratching on the body. Here's Watt scratching his face. Fidgety hands. Partial body dissipatory action involving repetitive behavior, continuously rubbing your fingers together, repeated ringing, moving, or fidgeting hands. Here's Ted Bundy. Here's Scott Peterson when they were looking for his wife Lacey. Watts 
doing his repetitive hand movements. Fidgety body. Partial body dissipatory action involving repetitive behavior such as tapping your feet, yawning, and repeated shifting or moving of the body. Okay, so yawning. A fake yawn, which is done to give a person time to develop a plan, make a decision, or respond to a question. We saw this happening with Kessinger in the interview room when she was so bored. Here's Ted Bundy at his trial, yawning. Here's Eileen Warnos. She's totally worn out, looks like. Pacing. We saw plenty of this happening um, with all the body cam footage. The Chris Watts. It's an individual walking back and forth in a small area. Here Watts is pacing around while Detective Baumhover is standing there at the bottom of the steps. There's a thing called the felony stretch. Someone will stretch their arms while making an assessment of a situation they may run or fight. Dissociation. They will make no eye contact. Person may avoid eye contact with law enforcement when approached. Here's Watts crouched down, talking on his phone, acting like he's concerned. Here he is walking up out of his truck. Notice he has on his uh, Ray-Bans or whatever glasses he's wearing. A submissive posture. When an individual sees law enforcement for some or some excuse me, some other threat, and is trying to dissociate, he may hunch over and down to avoid being seen as a threat. This is clear when Ronnie Watts is inside of the interrogation room. Here's Watts when he crouches down and looks inside Shanann's Alexis. He's just trying to um, act as if he's not even responsible. Exaggerated normalcy occurs when a person exaggerates the extent to which he would appear to be a member of an environment. Here's Watts and everybody just sort of milling around. Here's Watts acting like, I don't know what, he looks like the devil in this picture. He definitely doesn't belong in Nate's house. This is when he realizes he's busted and it's because he doesn't even sleep upstairs. He's been sleeping in the basement. Preparatory actions. Uh, arms are in a semi-defensive position. They place their hands at their waist level to shorten the reaction time to defend or strike, and their body may also be turned slightly to allow for quicker reaction to threats. Here's BTK with his hands on his uh, hips. There's Watts kind of laughing and he's kind of self-soothing in a defensive posture. 
Here's Watts really eyeing up the policeman. Blading. Blading involves an individual turning his body 90 degrees to orient his stance. Here's Watts, paranoid as hell. He keeps turning. He doesn't know whether to run, hide. He's upstairs thinking, uh-oh, they found the phone. I'm busted. He's glancing over at uh, Nicole Atkinson's son. He's in another defensive posture, standing sideways, looking at Detective Baumhover. Okay, verbal behaviors. Deflection. While being interviewed by law enforcement, they may attempt to avoid or adjust questions they are being asked. We all remember when uh, Kessinger kept saying, uh, what difference does it make if I give you my phone or not? You try to buy time to think of a deceptive response. Can involve repeating questions back to the interviewer. Answering questions with a question or answering with unrelated information. Here's Watts uh, pretending he doesn't remember the code to get into Shanann's phone. Here's Kessinger arguing what difference does it make if I give you my phone. Here he is in his prison confession when he asks, well, don't you guys have a video? There's a conversational dead stop. After issuing a command providing information back, which was not requested, for example, asking why, in an attempt to buy time or regain control of the situation. It is buying time to finish or form a plan involves the inability or refusal to be placed in a position of tactical disadvantage. Um, Kessinger keeps offering up all sorts of information. Ted Bundy thought he was so brilliant, he defended himself in court. Watts acting concerned and contacting hospitals. Watts blatantly lying in his new confession. There's a deep sigh. Buying time to finish or form a plan involves inability or refusal to be placed in a position of tactical disadvantage. A deep sigh may indicate a number of emotions ranging from a person who is about to confess or tell the truth. It can be a sign of relief, getting annoyed, tired of telling the story, and wants the encounter to be over. Evident when Kessinger brings her dad in. And she's sighing and totally bored. Can't answer a question. Unable or reluctant to answer a question that he should have an answer to, like not knowing zodiac sign or age. Here's Watts staring down at the phone in disbelief, like he can't believe that uh, Atkinson's son found that phone. Here he is with his little girlfriend. Conversational declarations.
When a subject makes a verbal indication to take a specific action, such as fighting, running, etc., it's almost like a fight or flight response, such as not turning in a cell phone, etc., which Kessinger really didn't want to do. Whenever someone is taking an order and gives the exact opposite in an answer, it involves the inability or refusal to be placed in a position of tactical disadvantage. There's uh, N.K. You know, uh, she couldn't really explain why they kept talking 51 minutes and then text messages and then deleting them and then she kept saying, why, 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 poor me. Their verbal cues. Coherences Answers to questions do not make any sense. Remember Graham Coder telling Watts they don't make any sense at all. Manson was a master just trying to confuse people with all his gibberish. Here's Watts trying to think of something intelligent to say. There are inconsistencies. Inconsistencies between statements or statements and other evidence. At first he would not admit that uh, he killed his whole family. They couldn't really explain away why they were talking at 2 a.m. on August 14th. I still can't believe that he was able to shove his little girls down into an 8-inch hole. Spontaneous admissions. It's unrehearsed rather than coerced or practiced. Here's Nicole Atkinson. She's not rehearsed. She's panicking because her friend is missing. Anxiety. Notice uh, Charles Manson. He's anxious. Look at his tongue. And look at Chris Watts. Here he is sweating profusely. Here he is standing there looking down at Shanann's purse like, oh shit. Mirroring. Uh, Baumhofer is standing there with his arm on his hip. Watts is doing the same thing. The detective has his hand on his head. Kessinger has it on her face. He's relaxing with Detective Baumover and Shenan's suitcase is right there at the bottom of the steps. This is his face of just pure evil. This happened to be a screenshot I took. And if you zoom in, he just looks up at the police like he is pissed off. Anyway, that's it for me. Please comment. And I'd like to hear from you. I hope the sound quality is good enough. 
please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, everybody. This was, um, in 2015, approved for public release. Distribu distribution is unlimited. Take care, everybody. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.